you have heard me mention Cordova before and probably are wondering what exactly is Cordova? And along the way, you might have heard about NG Cordova and probably are also wondering what is NG Cordova and how does it correspond to Cordova? And what role do these two play in the overall scheme of things when we are trying to do our multi-platform mobile apps using Ionic? So I will address this question from the Ionic's perspective uh, and how Ionic leverages Cordova in order to reach out to the native platform. As I emphasized in one of my earlier lectures, the native way of targeting specific mobile platforms like iOS or Android would be to use the native tools and write your applications in the languages that these native tools support. Like, for example, if you were doing iOS applications, you would write your applications using Objective-C or the Swift programming language. Similarly, if you were targeting Android, you would have to use Java together with Android Studio for targeting the Android platform. Windows phones require you to know C Sharp. And you pretty soon get to learn that if you need to target the multiple platforms, you obviously need to learn all these different languages to be able to handle these different platforms and development for these different platforms. Now, we realized that Cordova solves this problem by putting a wrapper around the native platforms and then exposing a JavaScript API. Now, Cordova came first, even before Ionic. When Cordova was developed, which we'll talk about the history a little bit later, what Cordova was trying to do was the fact that many of these platforms have something called a web view, which can be used as one of the components within the user interface that you use for the, for the native applications. So what Cordova did was to take advantage of the presence of this web component and decided to essentially look at the entire screen being replaced with that web view. Thereby, your whole UI design then becomes an issue of developing your user interface using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you have web development skills, you already know how to lay out everything using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But the problem is that you have a native platform, and you have the native platform that has capabilities that you cannot directly access using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript because the native platform uses its own language like Objective-C for um, iOS, Java for Android, and C Sharp for Windows Phone. So what this means is that from the JavaScript level, you don't have access to the capabilities of the native platform. Cordova came in to fill in this gap. So what Cordova does is it wraps your web view with appropriate library code, whereby it gives access to the capabilities of the nat native platform through appropriate JavaScript API. So for example, if you want to access the camera of your underlying native platform, then all that you need to do is to issue a JavaScript function call. This function call will then be translated by Cordova to match the native calls that will actually enable you to access the camera on that particular platform, be it iOS, Android, or Windows Phone, or other platforms. So Cordova was, was filling in this gap between JavaScript and the native platform. So Cordova is a set of libraries together with plugins that you uh, uh, have 
for accessing various native capabilities. So you have plugins to allow you to access the camera, you have plugins to allow you to access the accelerometer on your mobile device, you have plugins that allow you access to the network capabilities of your uh, native device, you have plugins that allow you to access the uh, and set up the splash screen of your native device. You have plugins that allow you to be able to deliver notifications to the notification system that is supported by your native platform. So what Cordova did was to enclose the peculiarities of each of these native platforms through appropriate layer of code. And then on the other side, expose you a JavaScript API. So if you as a web designer wants to access the camera, you just need to access the corresponding JavaScript function that is exposed by Cordova. Hopefully that gives you a big picture view of what Cordova is trying to fill in. Now, if you are wondering how does it actually do that, that is beyond the scope of this course. If you have that kind of interest, then you need to know two things. You need to also know how the native platform works, and then you need to know how the JavaScript side of the story works, and then you'd be able to see how the, um, the libraries are actually developed by Cordova. That is a whole separate course in itself. Now, from our perspective, what we are trying to do in this course is that we want access to the native capabilities, but we only know JavaScript. So how do we get access to those native capabilities? That is where Cordova comes to our rescue. So we put Cordova around our Ionic application. Uh, we wrap our Ionic application inside Cordova, following Cordova's way of doing this wrapping. And then we get full access to the native capabilities. That is to the extent that we are going to deal with in this course. So now within this Cordova well here, I am dropping in my Ionic platform in there. This Ionic platform is now talking to the Cordova's JavaScript API and through Cordova it is able to talk to the native platform, be it iOS, Android or Windows Phone. But from our perspective as Ionic app developers, we only care about the fact that we can issue a JavaScript function call and get access to the entire capabilities of the underlying device. As long as there exists a Cordova plugin that enables us to access the native capabilities. That's about it as far as how Cordova plays the role in matching up from our Ionic application to the native capabilities. Then the next question you're going to ask me is, how do we make use of the Cordova capabilities? That we will explain in the next part of this lecture. And then we will also look at specific examples of how you can make use of the Cordova plugins to access the native capabilities of your device. That was indeed a long-winded explanation of something that is fairly straightforward when you think about it from the perspective of a user. From the perspective of a designer, it becomes a whole different story altogether. But we are looking at Cordova from the perspective of a user, the developer of an Ionic application that wants to make use of the native capabilities of the device. So what does Cordova bring to the game? Cordova is nothing but an open source mobile app development framework. And this bridges the gap between Ionic and your native platform. So it, it consists of wrappers that are targeted at different platforms. So you have one wrapper for iOS, you have one wrapper for Android, you have one wrapper for Windows Phone, you have one wrapper for BlackBerry and other platforms. Now, from the perspective of an Ionic app developer, we get access to the native capabilities through the JavaScript API that Cordova provides. How does Cordova provide this JavaScript API? 
for each of the native capabilities, like the camera, like the microphone, like the, um, uh, the native notification system, Cordova provides a plugin that provides a uniform interface which you can use within your application without having to worry how it works on the native platform. Cordova ensures that once you compile your application for each of the platforms, then it will work without a problem on each of these platforms. In the earlier module, we saw the use of Ionic platform add, iOS, Ionic platform add, Android, and so on. What each of these commands did was they put in the appropriate Cordova wrappers into place so that when you actually build and deploy your application, the Cordova libraries were already in place and matching up what you need to access the native devices capabilities. So to summarize it, your Ionic applications are going to be packaged using Cordova in order to target the capabilities of your native device. How do we make use of Cordova? That is what we're going to examine next. You probably are wondering, where did Cordova begin its life? Cordova started with this company called Nitobi in, in around 2008. So Cordova has, or rather, when it began its life, it was called PhoneGap. Now, you might have heard the term PhoneGap and you're hearing Cordova and you have probably have some vague idea of people saying Cordova, PhoneGap uh, interchangeably. And you, you're probably left confused. What is Cordova? What is PhoneGap? What's the relationship between the two and so on? So let's try to, um, to uh, understand the uh, similarities, the commonalities, and the uniqueness of each of these. Now, when Cordova began its life around in 2008, in this company called Nitobi, it was called PhoneGap. As the name implies, phone gap. It was filling in the gap between the web platform and the native uh, capabilities of different native uh, mobile platforms. So uh, this was uh, developed at Nitobi. And then subsequently, this company was bought out by, uh, by uh, Adobe because they wanted to integrate it into their own environment. Now, when Adobe brought out uh, Nitobi, PhoneGap was an open source platform. And so you have to adhere to the open source license. So this is where Adobe decided to, to take the open source part of PhoneGap and then give it to Apache to host this open source platform. Almost the entire PhoneGap was an open source platform anyway. So they gave it to Apache. So when they gave it to Apache, they wanted to retain the PhoneGap trademark. So they retained the PhoneGap trademark. So when Apache got hold of this code, the PhoneGap code base, they had to rename it. And so they decided to name it as Cordova. Now, again, the history is all there. I have a link to uh, the actual person that um, uh, was behind uh, PhoneGap. He has written an article about this. So I have a link to that in the additional resources. So you can read the details of this whole history. I might have um, sort of mixed up a little bit of that history, but bear with me. This is what I understood by reading um, all this. So this is where Apache Cordova took, it, took a life of its own. So Apache Cordova is an open source platform. Now, Ionic, when the Ionic developers developed Ionic, they started using Cordova to be able to reach out to the native platforms. So that's where Cordova and Ionic started playing together. So Ionic applications get enclosed inside Cordova, and then thereby you are able to access the native platform. Now, I mentioned about the fact that Adobe kept PhoneGap trademark. And Adobe developed a whole bunch of services and tools 
around this phone gap trademark. They were still using the Apache Cordova as the actual code base for PhoneGap. So if you go to Adobe's PhoneGap and then look around, you would see that they are using Apache Cordova as the underlying foundation or the base. But they have their own set of tools that enable you to develop cross-platform applications, what they call as the PhoneGap build tools. You can take your Ionic application and then Use it together for, with PhoneGap just as easily and be able to target uh, uh, different platforms So, if you so choose to. Now, you do realize that for iOS development, you need a Mac. With PhoneGap built, Adobe supports a cloud-based build platform for your hybrid mobile applications. So if you develop an Ionic application, you can use the PhoneGap built um, cloud-based uh, platform to build your application for both iOS and Android, and they will produce the, the end product, which you can then ship to the uh, iOS app store or to the Android uh, developer store. So again, that how you actually make use of PhoneGap build and so on is beyond the scope of this particular course, but there is ample documentation out there should you choose to use that path for further development. So now I hopefully I have cleared a little bit of the confusion about PhoneGap and Cordova, or maybe I have added to that confusion, but you can read up the actual article by the PhoneGap developers where this is explained in a lot more detail. From my perspective, if I have an Ionic app, I can package it using Cordova, using the, the local building tools that we have seen in the previous module, and be able to develop an application targeting either of the two platforms. You can also choose to use PhoneGap Build um, to do the development. You can use the cloud-based setup that PhoneGap Build provides for you by all means, the end product is going to be similar. All you're trying to do is to target different native platforms. Now that we have seen the bigger story behind Cordova and PhoneGap and so on, in comes this other thing called NG Cordova. What is this NG Cordova and how does it fit into this picture that we have been seeing so far. Now, NG Cordova is a set of AngularJS extensions to the Cordova API that was developed by the same people that are behind the Ionic application. You do realize that Ionic is done in AngularJS. So when the Ionic um, uh, framework developers were looking to use Cordova, they decided to wrap the Cordova plugins around with AngularJS extensions so that it becomes more easy to use these plugins in your AngularJS based Ionic applications. So that's where the NG Cordova comes into the picture. So on this slide, I have basically taken the words from the NG Cordova site who better to explain what they do than from their own site. So as they say on their site, it is a collection of 70 plus Angular JS extensions on top of the Cordova API that make it easy to make use of the Cordova plugins in your Ionic application. You will be using these in the form of services that you can inject into your modules and controllers and make use of them the angular way. So that's where NG Cordova comes into the picture. Now, since we are doing Ionic applications, we're going to take advantage of NG Cordova. Now, NG Cordova doesn't have the wrappers for all the Cordova plugins. Should you decide to use a Cordova plugin that doesn't have the NG Cordova wrapper, 
you can still do that, but you would have to then learn how to directly use the Cordova plugin. Or maybe you can choose to develop your own Angular wrapper around that Cordova plugin. It's not that difficult, but how to do that is beyond the scope of this course. Here we are only learning how to make use of what we already have from these different platforms. So ng Cordova comes into the picture to fill in the gap between Cordova's JavaScript API and Angular's way of making use of these. So how do we make use of ng Cordova within our application? Let's do uh, examine that next. So if you want to use ng Cordova within your Ionic application, the first thing that you need to do is install ng Cordova within your Ionic application. To do that, you will make use of Bower. Bower we have seen earlier. So you say Bower install ng Cordova minus minus save so that you save the, um, the option within your Bower.json file. So once you do that, Bower will go and fetch ng Cordova and then put it into the library where your Ionic code exists. Now, once it is put there, then you will need to include the corresponding ng Cordova's JavaScript file into your index.html page within your single page application. So to do that, we will um, add this script into our, uh, our index.html page. Now this script should appear between where you in uh, you import ionic bundle.js and where you import cordova.js. So cordova.js will be imported later and ionic bundle will be imported earlier than the script. So this comes between these two within your index.html page. In addition, in your JavaScript Angular module, you will have to inject the ng Cordova into place. So you would do something like shown in this example here. So you will say Angular module, and then within the injection part, you will inject the ng Cordova as seen here. We will see this as part of our exercise that you're going to do next.